and welcome back to Introducing Persistence. In this lesson, we're going to add a third-party XML library to our project, learn how to browse the source code of the Java language classes, and start writing our test method to test the XML conversion methods. Now one of the really great things about Java is the amazing number of third-party libraries available for a wide variety of tasks. Many of these libraries are open source and therefore free for us to use in our programs. So instead of having to write our own XML conversion routines, we can use existing Java libraries. In this tutorial, we're going to use an XML library called Xstream. As we'll see, the developers of this library have already done most of the work required to save Java objects in XML format. Now to use the Xtreme program libraries, we need to download Xtreme from their website, xtreme.codehouse.org. So we'll go to this URL, we'll select Download, we'll select the stable version, in this case it's 1.2.2, .2. in your case it may be a later version, that's fine. We only need the Xtreme core only file, which is just one JAR file. So we'll select Xtreme Core only, press save. Now I'm saving it in C colon backslash Eclipse where I have Eclipse installed. We can save it to any directory we want. We just have to remember it so we can find it in a minute. Now the file is called Xtreme dash and then the version number dot JAR. JAR files are compressed files that typically hold the compiled classes for a set of related packages. In this case, the Xtream developers put all of the classes that we need to translate objects to and from XML into this one JAR file. This will make it much easier to deploy our application to a runtime environment. Now, we need to add this JAR file to our project's build path. We'll select our project, Persistence Tutorial, then we'll select Project, Properties, Java Build Path, and then we'll select the Libraries tab. Now we select Add External Jars, and we browse to the folder where we saved our Xtreme jar file, select that, select Open, and now it's added this jar file to our project. So now we can import any of the packages in this jar file and use them in our project. Now while we're in this screen, we can add the Java source code to our project. The tutorial companion document contains instructions for downloading and installing the Java development kit, sometimes called the JDK. For this tutorial, you need either version 5 or 6, now, the version numbers are a little confusing. The actual program version for version 5 is 1.5 and for version 6 is 1.6. Now, when we're learning Java in Eclipse, one really cool feature is to be able to look at the source code for the Java language classes like string, ArrayList, etc. Because these Java classes are written in Java. Eclipse allows us to attach the source code for the Java language classes and then view it just like we do our own source code. So this way we can see how the Java experts write Java. To attach the source code, we come up here to the JRE system library and again yours might say 1.5. It should either say 1.5 or 1.6. We expand that. We find the rt.jar. We expand that and here we notice it says source attachment none. Now if yours already has source attached, then you don't need to do this. But if you don't have source attached, we click on this, click edit. We're going to go to an external file. We're looking for a file called src.zip. And we browse to the location where we installed the Java development kit, in this case JDK 1.6.0 open that up and here's our file src.zip. We select that, select open, select OK, and now 
we have the source code attached. We'll press OK. Now let's look at a couple things we can do with the source code. We'll open up our project, open up a class. Let's look at the person class. And let's click on the word string there. If we hit navigate, open declaration, which we can also do with an F3, it opens up the string class in our Java source file. So we're actually looking at the source code, how the Java developers wrote the string class. Now if we go navigate open type hierarchy or do F4, over on the left here we get two windows. This upper window shows us the string class and it shows it's a subclass of the object class. Remember the object class is the top class in Java. All other classes are subclasses of the object class. Then in this window down here we have all of the members of the string class, meaning the fields, the constructors, and the methods of the string class. So for example, if we want to go down here and look at the equals method of the string class, we click there and here we have the source code. We can see how the people that wrote the Java language wrote the equals method of the string class. Now one handy trick here is that when we're navigating through and, and clicking on different things we can use the alt left arrow and alt right arrow to go back or forward. So for example if we press alt left arrow it takes us back where we came from. Remember we started at the person string and if we do alt right arrow we go forward again. Now there are two really good reasons for attaching the source code for the Java classes. First, we can explore parts of the Java source code to see how the experts write Java code. Second, the Eclipse debugger needs the source code in order to step through lines of code. So if we have the source code of the Java classes, we can debug right into the core classes. Now we can attach the source code for other third-party Java libraries in exactly the same way. So we can explore the Java source code for any library where source is available. At this point, we can start working on the XML test method. First, perhaps we should ask, why would we want to save our MyLibrary objects in an XML file? Well, there are several very good reasons. First of all, XML is a standard file format that is both human and machine readable. So our MyLibrary file could potentially be used by other applications and we can also look at it with a text editor. Second, XML is designed to store hierarchical information. If we think about our classes, a MyLibrary object contains an array list of book objects. Each book object can contain a person object. Moreover, our example is very simple. A real-life Java application might have dozens or hundreds of objects that have multiple references. It is not obvious or easy to store this type of information in a straight text file or in a row column type of format. XML, on the other hand, is designed for this type of information. In XML, data elements nest inside other elements, similar to how Java objects nest inside others. A third, and maybe the best reason, for using XML is that other people, in our case the Xstream developers, have already figured out how to save Java objects with XML and written the methods for us. We don't even need to know anything about XML to use them. So for all of these reasons, we decided to use the XML format. Now as you may recall from an earlier lesson, we are going to use this library to write two methods convert to XML and convert from XML. Now the convert to XML method will be used along with the save string to file method to save our MyLibrary object to an XML file. 
Similarly, the convert from XML will be used with the get string from file method to retrieve an object from an XML text file. Since we're using the test first approach, we'll write the test method for these methods first. As with the save and get methods, it makes sense to test both the convert to XML and convert from XML methods in one test method. That way we can test that an object converted to XML matches the object converted back from XML. So let's open the MyUtilities test class for editing and write our test method. For our test, we're going to want to create a MyLibrary object that has some books and people in it. Now if we think ahead a little bit, we're going to need to create a MyLibrary object with books and people in it for testing several of our methods. So to save time, we'll create a method that returns a MyLibrary object that's got some books and people already populated in it. And that way we can get a new MyLibrary object that's got a bunch of stuff in it with just one method. So we'll go down to the bottom of our class. I'm going to clean this up here, get rid of some of this extra space. We're going to be careful to go after the closing curly brace of the method above, but before the curly brace that closes the whole class. And we'll start our method. It's going to be a public method. The return type is going to be a my library object. Remember, we're going to use this to create a my library. We'll call it create my library. It's not going to take any parameters. Now we've got some code over in the my library test that we can copy. So if we double click here, we look at the my library test. We can copy this code here. We'll paste it in using control V and then we need to delete the access modifier private. Since these are local variables and not fields. Now we can steal some more code. From our setup method. And we can steal some more code from our add items method. So what we're doing here is we're just declaring some local variables, b1, b2, p1, p2, and an ml. Then we're creating the new objects, new book objects, and new people objects, and setting some names and so forth. And this is very important. After we create the new My Library object, we're adding the books and people to that object so that they're inside the My Library array lists. Now we have one more thing to do, which is we have to return the ML object. And when we do that, now our compiler error goes away. So this is just a simple method that's going to allow us to create a standard My Library object with one line of code. In this lesson, we've added the Xtreme XML library to our project, learned how to browse the Java language source code, and added a method to make it easy to create a test my library object. At this point, we're ready to write our test method for the convert to XML and convert from XML methods, and then write the actual methods. And that's what we'll do in the next lesson. This is the end of lesson six. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.